So uh, I wasn't planning on buying anything, really. And I, I was not planning on buying anything new because I have enough stuff. I totally have enough stuff and there's no logical, rational reason I need to go buy more stuff because I have plenty of stuff. Then something happened. Those crafty bastards at camera store had a sale and had the gall to send me an email to tell me about it. So I thought, well, you're not going to suck at me with that play. So I thought. Well, I figured, you know, I'll just look on the website and see what, you know, just out of raw curiosity, what, what's this sale all about? So it's one of these sales, and they do this from time to time, um, where it's, um, it's graded or gradiated, or it is, the discount is such that the, um, the cheapest stuff gets the, the highest discount. That is, the really expensive stuff only is only 10% off, but the really cheap stuff that they just absolutely want to get rid of is 40% off. And so you've got 10, 20, 30, and 40, like different categories for different prices. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. Well, I'm not buying the expensive stuff. You know, I don't need anything. But, but, at, you know, 30 or 40% off, let's take a look at it. Just for curiosity, just out of raw curiosity, what is, you know, what, what's what's available on the 30 to 40 percent discount not that i'm going to buy anything but just just out of curiosity so i looked at um nikon lenses and uh, i didn't see anything there and then i looked at conical lenses and i didn't see anything there and I looked at film bodies for you know nikon and conica which is which which are the two main systems that i'm collecting right now and uh, I, I just didn't see anything that grabbed my eye although there were some nicromats that surprised me that there there were uh, some nicromats included in the sale um which is a good sign because it means that nicromats are still a bargain, um, and because uh, the prices had been had been trending up on nicromats, I've done a bunch of nicromat videos, and uh, but most of those were a couple of years ago, and I wasn't wasn't really sure if nicromats were still a deal, and they, apparently apparently you can still get a good bargain on a nicromat. But I already I have I have two nicromats. I don't need another one, so I passed on that, and I thought, well, what else? Uh, I've got a Pentax K mount camera. I looked at that, and I'm like. Well, I didn't really see anything that caught my eye. There was a 5512 and came out that like, eh, I've heard that's a neat lens, but but there was this other neat lens that was only half the price, and it was in um, M42. And I took a look at the M42 stuff, and um, I had noticed before. I mean, because they didn't. It, it, it was interesting to me to note what they put on sale and what they didn't. Because in M42, um, I've got a couple of M42 lenses. I picked up a Helios 44 and a, um, what do you call it, Pentacon 518 a few years ago at a swap meet for next to nothing. Um, you know, just to have them. I've never, I've never used them. I've uh, never used them. Um, and, um, um, and, uh, but they've been sitting on a shelf and I figured, well, you know, for, for whatever I paid for them, they can sit on a shelf until, I, until I, you know, one day I'll go mirrorless you know, or I'll, maybe I'll get an M42 body. Um, or what I'd really like and what I've been looking out for is one of these um, M42 to Konica AR adapters. Uh, those were made, um, uh, uh, you, you can use M42 lenses on a Konica AR body uh, and, and focus to infinity because Konica AR has the, the narrowest uh, film to flange distance of any of the old um, SLR systems of the period. Um, uh, but I, I just haven't found one of those, those adapters yet. But I've got a couple of M42 lenses sitting on a shelf, and then, um, and um, and I had noticed on their website that um, on Camera Store's website uh, that they had uh, they had some neat M42 lenses, and a little they were a little pricey, but there was one that I kind of liked that uh, that I was interested in. It was an Olympus Zuiko 135 3.5, and it was priced pretty competitively. And I, I thought about getting it, but I'm like, yeah, well, you know, the last thing I need is to, to buy into another system. And that lens was not on sale. I'm like, huh, interesting. So the, the apparently that's, uh, you know, the, the, the camera store fellows are sticking to their guns on this Wika. They're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> if you want this Wika, you're, you're, you're going you're gonna to pay for it. But I did find this. Um, I found this Petri 3528. Um, 
and I think it was listed, I believe it was listed in three out of five condition across the board, optical, mechanical, cosmetic. And um, focus is pretty smooth. Aperture seems pretty smooth. Maybe a little loose, but seems okay. Um, it does, does not have a rear cap and was advertised as such, so that's fine. And uh, let's see here, how about the blades? Yeah. Yeah. That looks good. Looks like yeah. blades look okay. So I saw this and I'm like, well, you know, I'd heard of Petri. I didn't know much about them. Um, and I thought, well, well, you know, what do I know about Petri? So I looked up on the uh, online. Apparently Petri had their own proprietary bayonet mount back in the 60s, but they also made some lenses in M42, including apparently this one. Um, and, um, and they continued manufacturing lenses in M42 mount, I believe until they went out of business where they stopped manufacturing cameras and lenses entirely in, I, I think, 77. So I'm not sure. I have no idea if this is a 1960s or 1970s era lens, no clue. Um, apparently the CC stands for color corrected um, and I believe what I read indicates uh, that Petri made lenses in M42 from 1959 to 1977. And I have absolutely no clue when this thing was made. No clue whatsoever. Um, but it's not an aftermarket lens. This is an original equipment manufacturer lens. Now Petri was not, they weren't a high-end manufacturer by any stretch, um, but you know I mean, I've got a couple, I have one lens made in the Soviet Union, another one made in East Germany. So is, is, it, is it likely that the, the, the discount Japanese lens is, is, is made any worse? <laughs> no. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, this thing, the, the construction quality and optical quality, in all likelihood, are at least on par with the, uh, the items of communist manufacture, which I already own. Um, M42 can be a dangerous system to get into because there's a real, lot of really neat stuff and it's a, there's a very active collector community. Um, and the really, really cool stuff does command a premium price. And so um, it, it was curious to me to find um, a, a lens which was, I mean, it, it qualifies as OEM. It's not, it's not aftermarket. Technically, it's not aftermarket. It's, it's a discount brand, but it's not aftermarket. I also like the fact that it's a 35 millimeter focal length. Uh, because in M42 you can still find uh, quite a few bargains in uh, you know 50, 55 millimeter focal length, but you get outside of that and um, uh, and they get real pricey real fast, or at least they, they, the, the the interesting stuff can get can get pricey. Um, other than the communist, I mean the communist manufacturer, I mean, because I mean, the Soviets made millions of, of Helios 44s, so the, those you can always find for for cheap. Um, so I picked this up and then I thought, well, what's the point in having a lens if I don't have a camera, right? That's the next thought that popped into my head. Um, and, and fight as I did, I thought, well, you know, I'll just look at the M42 bodies and see just out of curiosity, what, what's, what's the bargain basement sale item on M42 bodies? And guess what I found? Um, and this was, again, this is a discount Japanese brand, which was priced below the East German competition. This was actually cheaper than a um, Practica or Practica. And this is a Ricoh Singlex TLS. And I've heard of these. I've never seen one. I've never handled one. Um, but I'm, I, I've been aware of their existence. This is clean. This is a clean camera. The camera store does a really nice job in cleaning up the stuff they sell. By the way, I have no relationship with the camera store. They're not, they're not um, um, compensating me in any way for talking about them um, or for mentioning. I just, you know, I'm just sharing my own experience. They, uh, that's where I got this stuff. Uh, and they do, uh, they really do a nice job of cleaning up the stuff they sell. That, that is absolutely true. Well, since this has no front cap and the Petri lens has no rear cap, um, let's see if we can put these two together. Should be a simple matter of just screwing the one, 
should just all right there we go all right very good okay there. um so this is wow this is not a lightweight combination not that i'm complaining um rico is was a discount brand like petri it was a discount brand um in the 60s, 70s, and well into the 80s. Um, in, the, in the 60s, they made, um, they made this camera and perhaps, I think maybe some others, I'm not sure, in M42 mount. And then in the 70s, they, uh, they switched to Pentax K mount. I've, I've previously done a video on the Ricoh XR1, which was um, their first uh, K mount camera, and, um, and it's still a bargain. And, and because there's no such thing as a Rico collector community. I mean, there are no Rico collectors. Um, apparently, there aren't very many Petri collectors either. I mean, the, the fact that this was put on sale in this Wico wasn't kind of suggest to me that, well, you know, they, <laughs> there are no real active Petri collectors either. But this stuff was made uh, at a time when even uh, discount bargain consumer products were overwhelmingly made of metal and um, were made pretty well. So. I'm, I'm gambling on that. Um, I'm gambling on the fact that this was probably reasonably well made. It is heavy. It is, this, is, this is not a lightweight piece of kit right here. So, um, let's see, how does this thing open? I have no idea. I didn't even read the instruction manual yet. Let's see. Do you, do you pull up on this? Is that how it opens? Let's see. Should I try? Yep. There we go. And this is kind of what sold me on the um, on the Rico. Right back there, you see that? You see what that is? That is a Copal square shutter. So, at a bare minimum, I know that this camera has an awesome shutter. The shutter is the beating heart of a camera, and I am a huge fan of the Copal square shutter. I've talked about it before on, on several other videos, and um, uh, if nothing else, then I, I know that this camera has an awesome shutter. I, I can also feel that it is very heavy. Uh, it is overwhelmingly metal and not thin metal at that. There's a, there's a whoa, what's, uh-oh, uh-oh, what? Okay, yeah. all right, that's in, good, okay. Um, and it's not thin metal at that. I mean, this is, it's got a bit of a, well, got a bit of a dent in the prism there, but that's, should be purely cosmetic. Um, I purchased this in, it was rated 4 out of 5 mechanical condition, 3 out of 5 cosmetic, which is roughly equivalent to say KEH's bargain grade, uh, which means that um, it should, uh, um, it, it may not be pretty, but it ought to work. It should not need any repair whatsoever. 4 out of 5 mechanical means it, it, it ought to work just fine without any need for repair. Um, and so that's what I expect out of this. All right, shutter speeds from B to 1000. Um, and let's see, it looks like you lift this to change the ASA. All right. And nice, that's nice. Okay, it's a nice feel. So it's got a standoff position here. And it's not, uh, you don't, it's, it's not a very, uh, it's kind of a short stroke. It's nice. That's nice. It's got a nice feel to it. I like that. Um, the um, why they put the shutter speed control here rather than up here, don't know. No clue. But who cares? So what? Um, it works. At least it appears to work. So um, so that was my gamble. And um, so now I'm a, I'm officially a, 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 the, let's see here. The, the the rubber grip on the Petri is. A little loose, but again, that was advertised. That was disclosed in the listing. It said so in the listing. It said that the the rubber grip was a little loose. So fine, okay. I knew that when I bought it. Um, uh, very good. Well, all right. So now I'm officially a member of the M42 Club. Something that I had I had put off for a long time because man, that's that's just a that can be a dangerous thing. <laughs> M42 collecting is just it is it's uh, yeah. There's a lot of really cool stuff, and it just it, it can be endless. It's just endless. I really I should really just just get rid of this as soon as I can. <laughs> I really should. 
<laughs> I need to watch my addictions. Um, okay, so uh, I'm just sharing my thoughts and my rationalization and my justification. You know, I recently did a video about um, the ethics of camera collecting. And, um, and I got some really neat responses on that, which I very much appreciate from everybody who responded. And um, a lot of <laughs> some folks were like, well, you're not really, you know, you don't, you're not taking anything off the market. After all, you're merely a temporary custodian. What you think it'll live forever? You know, sooner or later, your stuff is going to wind up in an estate sale. So just enjoy it. <laughs> so essentially, I, I'm ethically redeemed by my own mortality as a, as a camera collector. Um, at least uh, that was one point of view expressed by a couple of people. Um, so, anyway, I saw this sale and I, 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 I had uh, narrowed down my, my rational choices to these two items, which were just absolutely dirt cheap. I mean, they were both discounted either you know, 30 and 40 percent. I think the camera was 30 percent off and the lens was 40 percent off. Uh, I thought, anyway, they were really, really inexpensive. But then I thought, well, God, you know, shouldn't I give somebody else, you know, should, I mean, if I believe in what I say, I really ought to give somebody else an opportunity to buy this stuff before I buy it. So the sale was going on for a few days, maybe a week, I don't remember, and, um, and it was over on, um, on a Monday. And so I thought, well, fine. I'll wait until Sunday night to pull the trigger. And if nobody buys this stuff on Sunday night, then I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll buy it. So that's what I did. So, um, so I, I have an ethically clear conscience, and I helped camera store clear off some, some junk they couldn't move. Um, so you know, that was nice. Right, I'm, I'm doing right. I'm doing him a favor, aren't I? Right, exactly. I'm such a nice guy. All right, so such are the noises in my head today. Thank you for sharing my uh, my thoughts and neuroses, and I hope you found this um, uh, helpful or amusing or entertaining or at least not a complete waste of your time. Uh, and if so, then please do like and subscribe. And as always, check out the links down below. Thanks. Now, take care. Bye bye.